I love this precious little stone church perched on the side of this magnificent mountain. It's amazing that this is the first church I've ever belonged to. I announced to everyone who would listen that when I got settled in Tucson, I wanted to join a church and a Bible study group. I visited many churches when we first moved back, but somehow they didn't spark joy. Then one day, someone told me about the little stone church up the hill behind the El Conquistador, and I went looking for it. The first Sunday when we sang, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place, I was hooked. My joy was sparked. God was here, in spades. Thanks be to God and the path that led me here. Some of you may have noticed that I often come early so I can hear the music that Jose and Matt make twice. Bless you both for all you do to make this place so very special. And bless each of you too for choosing to be here in my church home this morning. Good morning. Welcome to Oro Valley United Church of Christ. We are so blessed to have you. I am Reverend Drew Terry, the pastor here, and it is a joy to have you join us. Here at Oro Valley United Church of Christ, we say whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are a child of God, and we are blessed to have you with us. At Oro Valley UCC, our mission is to be enthusiastic followers of Christ practicing inclusive worship of God. And we do this through our covenantal relationships with one another and with all God's people, all of humanity, practicing benevolence, mission and outreach, and justice for all. You can find out more about us at our website at orvalleyucc.org. You can also reach out to us if you'd like more information. We'd be happy to speak with you. Oro Valley UCC at msn.com is, is our email address. Please feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. And also you can let us know a little bit more about yourself and where you are in life's journey. As well as we'd be happy to share more about our life together and our mission in Christ. You can also find us on Facebook through our church name. And a lot of our mission work, a lot of our announcements, our life together, you can find through the comment section of if you are using Facebook, or we do invite you to our website. Our website has all the information you need to know more about us and our missions. I do want to share some information with you this morning. We, we do have, um, we are still participating in our mission project to make masks. We've actually updated the patterns and what they're asking for. As with everything right now, things are constantly changing. We do have an updated link for that information, so please do find that. Also, we've published and we're inviting people to join as they feel called. We have two new forms that you can access electronically and submit to us uh, through the internet. One is a, is a request form. If you, if you need any assistance or you need help at this time, we'd, we'd love to help you as we are able and in a way that keeps us as well as our community safe and healthy. So we have, if you need groceries, if you need help trying to get some prescription medications, if you need help even getting dog food or cat food or pet food of any sort, we'd be happy to help you in, in many ways. Or even if you're just needing a phone call, and, and a person to chat with. We have a form that you can fill out and give us the information, give us what you need. We also have a volunteer form. If you are willing and able and whatever capacity keeps you safe and healthy, we have a form you can fill out. Let us know what you are able to do and we'd be happy to connect and coordinate that. I wanna give a big thank you to Jennifer Conrad for helping us coordinate that, for helping us create those forms as well. 
Today is a special day. Today is Palm Sunday. It's the day of celebration. It's a day of joy. And in that spirit, it's the beginning of Holy Week. So this week we enter into the final week of Lent, the final week of self-reflection and preparation and discernment as we seek to follow Jesus, especially through his final moments, the Last Supper, the crucifixion, and then on into resurrection, the foundation of our faith. As we take this journey, as we take it together, and as today we gather to celebrate and to be filled with joy, <clears throat> I do want to give you a, an update. We do Friday at 3 p.m. We will have a Good Friday service, and it will be around the Stations of the Cross. We will have a service in which we will join together and various artists, a handful of artists in our community have created their own renditions of each one of the 14 stations. And Jose, our music director, has added music to certain pieces. And so we've created a beautiful reflective service. And it'll be a time you can join us uh, via Facebook or YouTube. Uh, you can also find this on our website. But it will be a service in which through each movement of the station you will be invited to take a moment, take a deep breath, and reflect on Christ's journey, enjoying Christ on the journey, the meaningful, the reflective journey of, from his sentencing and his conviction to his burial. If you have any other questions or like to know more about our church, please do find us on our website or Facebook couple of notes about our time, especially for those joining us for the first time. Today is Palm Sunday. Like I said, it's a day of celebration. It's a day of joy. It's a day of being together in a, in a wonderful and amazing and mysterious way. A couple of notes about our service to live into that joy, to live into that celebration, especially in this time. One, uh, we decided when we started this uh, a few weeks ago and we went virtual, we understood that the most popular thing, probably the most popular thing on the internet are cat videos. And so we decided, well, we want to be a church that's, that's with people and meets people where they are. And so my son, uh, Nolan, donated a stuffed kitty cat. And so there's a, it's probably a little black dot on your screen, but we have a stuffed little kitty cat that sits and joins us. So you are officially watching a cat video. Also, one of the places of presence, the way in this bizarre time, this time in which we seek to be together and yet we're not physically together and to be present with one another as we worship. I've, I've been telling people about my socks. I don't wear normal socks. And so every week, so and when we gather together on Sunday mornings in person, usually somebody comes up to me and says, hey, pastor, I saw you were wearing these socks. And so since you can't see my socks, I'll tell you what I'm wearing. And also I'll post on Facebook a picture. But today I'm, I'm wearing, uh, it's monkeys eating bananas. And I've always loved monkeys since I was a kid. They were one of my favorite animals. And one of the reasons they were my favorite animals is because they just always seemed so playful. Wherever I saw them, at the zoo or on a documentary, they just always seemed able to find a way to be filled with joy. And so in that spirit, I invite us to be present. I invite you to be present where you are, whoever you are, however you identify. Let's all take a deep breath. Be present where you are, who you are, right now. Be present with those who are near you. Be present with those all around you, both near and far. Be present with those who join you in watching this service. And let us all be present with the Holy Spirit as we enter into our worship and our call to worship.
Dear loved ones, throughout the service this morning, I do invite you, you will notice there are call and response moments, moments when I speak or moments um, when someone, when another leader speaks. And we invite you to follow along as you are able along on your screen. And when I do my reading and it's your turn to read or speak out loud, I'll invite you by lifting my hand to join me in reading the congregation part. Humble and riding on a donkey, we greet you. Acclaimed by crowds and caroled by children, we cheer you. Moving from the peace of the countryside to the corridors of power, we salute you, Christ our Lord. You are giving the beast of burden, a new dignity. You are giving majesty, a new face. You are giving those who long for redemption, a new song to sing. With them, with heart and voice, we shout, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Please join me in prayer. Blessed one, we are humbled by your example. You entered Jerusalem in lowly estate riding on a donkey. You emptied yourself and came as a servant tall, forsaking the power to command. Heir of David, come to us now and be our king, our ruler that we too may sing our hosannas. Amen. Please stand as you are able and body or spirit as we sing our first hymn. This day places a mirror before our faces. We would rather sing hosannas with a cheering crowd than stand up for our convictions in the face of an angry mob. We would rather dine with Christ at his table than stand up for him in a courtyard of accusers. We would rather see ourselves as Christ's champions than admit to ourselves that we too could betray him with a kiss. Forgive our fickle faith and heal our hesitant hearts. 
In your loving name we pray, amen. Dear loved ones, hear these words of God's mercy and everlasting assurance of pardon. God has opened the gates of righteousness, and the righteous enter through it. The one who is our cornerstone, the stone the builders rejected, has become our salvation. God offers us forgiveness and fullness of grace in Christ's name. I now invite you, as you are able, to join in here at Aurora Valley UCC, we started a tradition a couple of years ago. We read a portion of the preamble to the United Church of Christ Constitution. And I know that might sound a little strange. We do it because for us, these words read like a statement of faith. For us, these words acknowledge who we are and express who God is calling us to be. And so for us, these words, this portion of the Constitution is more than simply words in a legal document. They are statements of faith. And so I invite you as you are able and are, as you are called to join me in our reading of this statement. The United Church of Christ acknowledges as its sole head, Jesus Christ the Son of God, and our Savior. It acknowledges as followers of Christ all who share in this confession. It looks to the Word of God in the Scriptures and to the presence of the Holy Spirit to prosper its creative and redemptive work in the world. It claims as its own the faith of the historic church expressed in the Apostles' Creed and Nicene Creed. It affirms the responsibilities of the church in each generation to make this faith its own in accordance with the teaching of our Lord. It recognizes two sacraments, baptism and holy communion. All members shall have the undisturbed right to follow the word of God as it, made, as it is made known to them under the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. Dear loved ones, before we have our scripture reading, I do want to share with you uh, an invitation to either pause if you have not done this yet. If you pause it, you can uh, join back where you left off. The service will keep going, but you'll, you'll be okay and you can catch up with us. Um, today, we are celebrating Holy Communion. And so we are inviting you to bring whatever cup you have whatever bread, English muffin, donut, whatever, whatever bread you have to bring to the table and go ahead and bring it to you. And you can, for your cup, you can use grape juice, you can use wine, you can use water if you need to. Whatever you have to bring forth Christ's table. So please, if, if you need to, uh, you can take a break and take a moment and... <clears throat> Grab those elements for communion before our scripture reading and our sermon. Good morning. The reading this morning is from Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you. And at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. 
The crowds that went ahead of them and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Dear God, the one who is truth, the one we seek in this time of uncertainty, the one who we seek to bring us once again joy and truth and love, we come to you this morning seeking to hear your voice. I pray the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable to you, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. This is, a, this is an ancient tradition, Palm Sunday. It's a special day, and I'm, I'm grateful uh, our, our office manager, Janet, brought in our palms. So, and and um, you may have seen uh, a slew of pictures of people with palm trees, palm branches. <clears throat> it's an ancient tradition. Today is an ancient and special day. It's a story told in all four of the Gospels. And what jumped out to me today was the piece of the story of spontaneous celebration, of finding a way to celebrate. And in that spirit, in that mindset, as I was thinking about this, as I was thinking about peasants and country folk and everyday people traveling for thousands of miles, they'd all traveled from wherever they lived to come to Jerusalem to celebrate the holy celebration of Passover. And as I thought about them and I thought about their journey and I thought about them taking off their cloaks and throwing them on the ground or breaking off palm branches and waving them in the air. I thought of a movie, and it's a movie called Fandango. It's okay if you've never seen the movie, that's not important. I will warn you, I'm gonna ruin the ending. That's okay too, if you're intrigued, it's still worth seeing the movie. The story of Fandango is a story of soon to be college graduates on their last adventure, on their last move towards a delta. And as they're about to graduate, they go on this epic journey, a final goodbye to their youth, uh, a journey into the next chapter. And along the path, they do all kinds of wild, kooky things. They're courageous, they're bold, but their courage and their boldness are aimless and reckless. And then we get to the end, the end of their journey. And at the end of their journey, they come to, those, to a small border town. And it's a town that sits on the border between Mexico and Texas. And it's almost more than just a physical geographical border. They look out across the border, across the vast land, both at the junction between what was, what is, and the mysterious, the uncertain, the almost overwhelming, the hopeful mystery of tomorrow. And it's in this moment that they ask themselves, what will we do now? And it's in this moment their decision is to celebrate. And not just celebrate. One of their friends is going to get married. And so they decide their final hurrah, the last thing they should do together, is have a wedding, have a true festival. 
Problem is, they're in a small town. They don't know anybody in this town. They're thousands of miles from home. But they say that's not a problem. They overcome their fear. That courage, that boldness that up until this point was reckless and destructive and, and seemed to have no point, all of a sudden became purposeful, meaningful. They began going door to door. They went to everyone they could meet in the town and they'd say things. They'd say, hey, my friend's having a wedding, but the band canceled at the last minute. Do you know a band? Hey, my friend's having a wedding and, and the caterer fell through. Do you know anybody who can get us some food? And what happened was not only were they courageous enough, bold enough to make an attempt to do something phenomenal, they were supported by the community they came to. And what happened was an all-town event, an event of strangers who had never met each other, an event of people who intimately knew one another, and all of it became one. There were beautiful lights everywhere. There was a dance floor. There was a band. There was a feast for everyone present and more so. And yes, there was even a delicious beautiful cake, all because they found the courage and the boldness to look into the mystery of tomorrow, to look into its fear and its uncertainty, and to let their hope for an eternal joy spring forth. And that's what I think the the people of Palm Sunday did. See, the people of Palm Sunday have done this year after year. It almost bordered on ritual becoming routine. They had traveled every year as long as they could remember to march into Jerusalem to seek God's blessings. They came because it was told them of God's amazing power in the past of the liberation God brought to the slaves in Egypt, of the liberation and the glory God brought to people who wandered without food or water in the desert, the amazing, wonderful things God had done for those in need, for those who were hungry, those who were thirsty, for the orphan, for the widow. And so the people came because they were in need, because they had seen one too many times, and they lived under the oppression of conqueror after conqueror. They had seen time after time the powers that be just march on in, march on into the city of God and take over and take everything away and reapply the yoke that God had broken. They knew what it was like. They knew what a conqueror looked like. A valiant gold and purple metal everywhere. More money than they could ever dream of just parading in front of their faces. In power and in strength and in fear and intimidation. But today they saw a different parade. They saw the procession. They saw the procession of a teacher. They saw the procession of a prophet riding a donkey and a colt. And they said, this is God's promise. God is here. This isn't human power. This isn't all the things that have caused us anguish and sorrow. And what we have yearned to get away from. This is what we've yearned to follow. And as soon as they saw it, they didn't need anything else. They knew how to celebrate it. They knew how to take what they had. 
the cloaks on their backs, the palm branches over their heads, and they made it awesome. They brought life and joy, and they found God's way forward. And it was a mystery. And it's clear it was a mystery because they still think Jesus is only a prophet. That's not as significant as the fact they know that the path that Jesus takes is the path to God's renewal, God's rejoicing. And today, we are in that place. We are on a pilgrimage. We are on a journey we did not choose to take. One that we were called into, one that we were thrown into, and we are taking with grace, and seeking God's renewal. And in so many ways, God is calling us, God is asking us, wherever we are, whoever we are, to take a deep breath, to look around where we are, and to figure out how to once again move forward in hope, move forward seeking and living out and celebrating God's joy. We do this today together with the sacrament of communion, the sacrament that defines this week, the sacrament that en encompasses everything this coming week, Holy Week, means. And we do it in a humble way. We do it at each other's tables, in our own living rooms, in our own kitchens, with our own bread, with our own drink. We do it having to leave behind and grieve actually breaking bread in person, actually drinking cup in person. We leave behind for a moment that, that yearning to have some authority make this holy. And we move into the hope, the joy, the mystery of the God's grace that being together as we are, as we are able, will fill us with what we need. That the elements in front of us, wherever we are, will be transformed. And that when we break them, we break them together. When we pour the cup, we pour it together. When we eat the bread, we are made whole together. When we drink this cup, we find peace together. And we move forward together. Singing, celebrating, rejoicing. That God's love, God's hope, God's joy is going to overcome anything we face now and into this mysterious future we are being called to live into. Amen.
invite us into our time of offering. And then this time, we do invite you as you are able to celebrate and share what gifts you are able. Um, <clears throat> we have many ways, new ways to share your gifts, especially your financial contributions. <clears throat> Again, <clears throat> you can mail them in at 1401 East El Conquistador Way, Oro Valley, Arizona, 85704. So you can mail in checks or any other financial contributions that way. We also have via our website a way to contribute electronically, um, or you can call or email us and we'd be happy to give you other options as well. And you can find those links in our Facebook link. At this time, we also invite you as you're able to celebrate these gifts, any gifts you get, whatever life and love you have shared, whether it's with strangers or with people you have shared with life with for decades. And if, if what you're offering up today is to call somebody, to give a phone call, or send a text message to a loved one. However, whatever gifts you are able, we invite you to lift those up at this time and celebrate how God has blessed you and how you have blessed others with God's abundance. Please join me in our invitation to the offering. Let us share with one another the joy of the Palm Sunday crowds as we share our gifts and are grateful for the blessings of Christ's peace on this holy day. For the blessings that come in our lives, let us offer our thanks through these gifts, gifts to our church, our community, and the world. As we offer our gifts, we remember, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
for us is so great that you gave us your own son to teach us the ways of life and death. May the gifts and offerings we bring this morning reflect our gratitude for Christ's gift of self, for Christ's anguish and passion, and for Christ's never failing love. Amen. I now invite us into our time of prayer together. And in this time we take a moment to lift up prayers for our own lives as well as all of God's people and all of humanity. I lift up special prayers today for all of you, for wherever you are. Not a single human being is, is untouched by this pandemic. For all of us going through COVID-19, that we may be healthy. For all those who are sick, that they may be healed, that those who are able may care for them with compassion and wisdom. For all those who have died, may they be at peace. For all of the families who have lost loved ones in this time, may they know God's comfort. For all those who are being overwhelmed by the loneliness, I pray that they find fulfillment, that they find assurance, that they know that they are not alone. I pray for our leaders around the world, in our towns, in our states, in our own country, and in every country, that all of our leaders may be filled with compassion that they may be filled with wisdom and that they will listen to that wisdom and be bold enough to follow. I offer up these prayers in a moment of silence and I also offer up the prayers in your hearts in a moment of silence. Dear God, the one who is healing and peace, we come to you this day a broken and scared world, a broken and scared people. We come, though, following our ancestors, seeking to sing your joy, willing and able to sing your joy with whatever we, are, we have, wherever we are. We pray for ourselves. We pray for our neighbors near and far, known and unknown that your love may reign, that your healing and your life-giving presence in the Holy Spirit may come now and forevermore. We pray all the prayers we've named and the prayers that we hold in our hearts, singing the words Christ taught us. As I said earlier in the service, we are doing <clears throat> Holy Communion today because today is the day we do Holy Communion. 
And at Order Valley UCC, we say whoever you are, wherever you are, everyone, 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 you are invited into this celebration. It is your table. It is our table. It is God's table. It is God's table that brings us together and reminds us that we are all God's beloved children. And so I hope in this time and in this space, you are able, where you are, to join us as you feel called in this sacred and powerful, life-giving sacrament that reminds us of God's eternal joy. We open communion, this section of our service, being led by our own folks, singing Hosanna. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. And all who fear God say, his love endures forever. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. With the Lord on our side, what can we fear? What can humankind do? Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. We shall triumph over those who surround us and stand in confidence in the Lord our God. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord is our strength and our might. The Lord has become our salvation. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna to God. God. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. highest. Hosanna, Hosanna to God. God. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Jesus asked to borrow a donkey. On the Thursday that followed, Jesus rented or was given John Mark's mother's upper room to celebrate the Passover with his disciples, to gather as we are gathered, loved ones, on the afternoon of the resurrection, Jesus was invited into a house in Emmaus and used the bread of that hospitality to break and bless. Lend Christ your table, your bread, your cup, and your heart. For as the disciples told the person who loaned the donkey, the Lord has need for it. 
Join me as you are able in our prayer of consecration. We are one bread, one body, one cup of blessing. Though we are many throughout the earth and this church community is scattered, we are one in Christ, in our many kitchens, in your kitchen, and in living rooms. Rest your hands lightly on these elements, which we set aside today to be a sacrament. Let us ask God's blessing upon them. Gentle Redeemer, there is no lockdown on your blessing and no quarantine on grace. Send your spirit of life and love, power and blessing upon every table where your child shelters in place, that this bread may be broken and gathered in love, and this cup poured out to give hope to all. Risen Christ, live in us that we may live in you. Breathe in us that we may breathe in you. We remember the, that Paul the Apostle wrote letters to the congregations throughout places we now call Greece, Turkey, and Macedonia. And they were the first remote worship services. Our online service has a long heritage. The communion words sent to the church at Corinth were these. For I received from the Lord what I also handed to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Please join me in our sharing of the elements. Let us, in our many places, receive the gift of God, the bread of heaven. We are one in Christ in the bread we share. Let us, in our many places, receive the gift of God, the cup of blessing. We are one in Christ in the cup we share. Dear loved ones, the body of Christ for you. Dear loved ones, let us drink together the cup of Christ. As we have shared in these elements, as we have shared in this table and in this holy sacrament, let us join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray in thanksgiving for this meal of grace, rejoicing that by the very method of our worship, we have embodied the truth that Christ's love is not limited by buildings made with human hands, nor contained in human ceremonies but blows as free as the Spirit in all places. Spirit of Christ, you have blessed our tables and our lives. May the eating of this bread give us courage to speak faith and act love, not only in church sanctuaries, but in your precious world. And may the drinking of this cup renew our hope even in the midst of pandemic. Wrap your hopeful presence around all whose bodies spirits and hearts need healing and let us become your compassion 
and safe refuge. Amen. Dear loved ones, let us go. Let us go from this time together, from these spaces that we are sharing together. Let us go to celebrate. Let us go into this holy week, giving up our griefs, lifting up our sorrows and our struggles. Let us journey together to once again be renewed in God's joy. The gates of righteousness are thrown wide. We go with God's blessings. The path of salvation is made plain. We go in Christ's truth. The cornerstone of our faith is sure. We go with the Spirit's grace. Go with God and walk with Christ during this holy week. Amen.